To officially open the presentation and welcome some of our guests, please welcome to the podium Canada Soccer Deputy General Secretary, Mr. Earl Cochran. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, today marks another important step on our journey towards leading a soccer nation in Canada. Before we get started, uh, I'd like to share some apologies um, as our CSA President, Mr. Victor Montagliani, and our General Secretary, Mr. Peter Montopoli. Uh, we're both scheduled to be here today, but we're unable to make it and travel to Toronto today. So my apologies. Um, I know personally how important this message and announcement was for both of these gentlemen. Um, so again, our apologies go out. I'd like to thank and introduce our speakers for today. Ms. Sylvie Bellavo, Canada Soccer LTPD Manager. Mr. Tony Fonseca, Canada Soccer Technical Director. Mr. John Herdman, Canada's Women's National Team Head Coach. And Mr. Tim Bezbachenko, Toronto FC General Manager. Another casualty of the fog and travel was uh, Anne Merklinger from Own the Podium, the Chief Executive Officer from Own the Podium. She was unable to travel and was on Peter's flight, so our apologies that she couldn't make it today. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge some of our special guests before we get started here today. Canada Soccer Board of Directors, Mr. Bob Richardson and Mr. Nick Bontis, thank you very much for being here. The Ontario Soccer Association President, Mr. Ron Smale, and the Technical Officer, Mr. Alex Chiet. Thank you. And of course, I'd like to thank representing our professional clubs here today, Mr. Greg Anderson from the Vancouver Whitecaps, Mr. Nick DeSantis, and Mr. Matt Jordan from the Montreal Impact, and Mr. Jeff Paulus from FC Edmonton. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. We've said it before a number of times, but it bears repeating here today that there has never been a more exciting time for those of us involved in Canadian soccer than, than today. Our sport has never been stronger with a record number of participants, unprecedented corporate support, and dedicated leaders working at all levels of our game, from community clubs through to the provincial and member, provincial and territorial member associations to our professional clubs, and then ultimately to the national governing body. In January, many of you were there when we presented the Canadian Soccer Association 2014-2018 Strategic Plan. It was titled Leading a, Nation, Leading a Soccer Nation. Today, we are pleased to be here to talk about the commitment and steps that our organization is taking in the development of our sport and celebrate the support of our sports and corporate partners in helping us to deliver on these objectives. Back in January when we presented this strategic plan, we committed ourselves to four strategic pillars. And we're glad to be here today to tell you more about how we're working to deliver on one of those pillars. Now that we've spent the last several years growing the game in Canada, establishing our expertise in hosting international events, putting our financial house in order, revamping the governance structure of the CSA, and building the Canada Soccer brand. Today we find ourselves in the best possible position to focus on our technical leadership by supporting our players, coaches, and officials at all levels of the game. For our players, that means ensuring that the LPTD, LTPD, is fully embraced and adopted across our country. It means implementing a national player development pathway for both boys and girls. And it means aligning our systems and structures across the country to provide a positive experience to all involved in the game. Today's presentation is going to touch on all of those points. You're going to hear about the progress of LTPD implementation and the work that is being done for and with our provincial and territorial member associations from Sylvie Bellevue. You will hear about our Canada Soccer Player Pathway and the Men's Excel Pathway from Tony Fonseca, Technical Director of Canada Soccer, as well as how the collaboration on this national player development vision will be critical to our success 
from Tim Bezbachenko, TFC General Manager, representing the pro clubs here tonight. Many of you have already seen the great work that has been done on the women's side, but today we have exciting details to share with you regarding Canada Soccer Women's XL Pathway and Program. You're going to hear more about this from John Herdman himself, but before we dive into the main presentation, I'm pleased to announce today that Bell is the founding partner of Canada Soccer Women's National XL Program. Bell, of course, is a primary partner of Canada Soccer, and Bell's enhanced support directed at our Women's National XL Program is going to be instrumental in ensuring Canada's top female athletes get access to world-leading resources across our program's four corners of development, physical, technical, tactical, mental, and social-emotional. We are obviously excited to see Bell team up with us in our player development efforts for the women's game, and you'll learn more about these a little later on from John. As I said earlier, uh, Anne Merklinger from On the Podium was expected to be here, but I want to thank Anne deeply for the collaborative and supportive role which the OTP has provided in order to guide our women's program to the highest of levels. Of note, following our main presentation here today, we will hold a photo opportunity with all of our speakers and the youth players you saw today on the pitch. There will also be media availability for each of our speakers. And on that note, let's get to the star of today's show, the Canada Soccer Pathway. Thank you. Let's now dive into what brought us here together this morning, the Canada Soccer Pathway. Please welcome to the podium, Ms. Sylvie Belliveau, Canada Soccer's LTPD manager. Thank you, and good morning. I was happy to take off from Montreal this morning, but even more happy to land safely in Toronto. Canada Soccer is committed to ensure that grassroots youth programming is fully embraced and universally adopted by all youth clubs from coast to coast. One of the LTPD key factors is Kaizen, and Kaizen refers to continuous improvement. What we've produced over the years was what we had to provide the best at the moment, and this continues to improve. So I'm privileged to introduce our new branding Canada Soccer Pathway, your goals are a game. So the name replaces Wellness to World Cup. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple to make it easy to adopt from parents to technical leaders. The tagline also speaks to showcasing each participant's goals and our collective pride in the beautiful game. With that will come new resources on our website to help provincial territorial soccer organization and clubs with relevant resources. And I want to allude specifically to the new LTPD community guide. I get to travel across the country and work with volunteer coaches, technical leaders to implement uh, soccer at the grassroots level for youth and children. And I acknowledge that we have different capacities different resources, different type of resources, and that just impacts the speed at which things are implemented from place to place. But what does not change is the understanding that if we all work in the same direction, if we align our program across Canada, then we're going to be, we're going to be stronger. So there is an understanding and a need for a collective vision and collective efforts, because together we are stronger. Thank you. The support shown by the provincial and territorial member associations for the Canada Soccer Pathway bodes well for our dynamic future in player development. To learn more, please welcome Mr. Tono Fonseca, Canada Soccer's technical director to expand on the vision of the Canada Soccer Pathway and its impact on soccer players across the country. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful day for Canadian soccer, I believe. Uh, and, and I think, you know, behind me, uh, you will find uh, the same belief uh, because we, we all work on this together. 
been a number of years, to be more precise, you know, 28 years since we made the last World Cup. And, and definitely with football evolving, you know, uh, all the time, uh, we need to do some adjustments. If we aspire to be in a World Cup, uh, you know, uh, in the next uh, four to eight years, I will say that we need to, to change. To change a lot of things uh, that we have done not so so well and keep the ones that we have done well uh, you know and improve them and I would say that uh, today you know if we want to improve uh, definitely one of the areas that we needed to look at it was a training you know uh, area how we uh, educate our young players how we maximize you know uh, their potential and definitely that's this is something that worries uh, us for, for a number of years and we have done an amazing job, to be honest, uh, with you, you know, getting ourselves into the stage that we are today. Uh, but definitely we need to look in beyond, in beyond that and, and improve it. And that's the reason, you know, with, with a lot of consultation that we have done, you know, across the country, we realize that, uh, you know, our training area uh, is an area where we need to impact the most. Uh, our kids uh, have been missing a couple of elements, not because we want them to miss, just because we didn't have enough knowledge, you know, and did not address it the right way. So today, you know, uh, we are very, very pleased to, to come to you and say, look, we have an idea how to do this. Uh, we have a belief that, uh, you know, if we go in this direction and we start working together, I think we can make this happen very fast. And that's what we are doing today. Uh, you know, we're saying that, uh, you know, we have to drastically change our training environment to maximize, you know, each one's potential. And we're talking about, I, I could say to you that uh, it's a three-in-one, uh, and, and it sounds maybe a, you know, a shampoo formula, but it's not. Uh, the three-in-one that I mean is, is that we have to maximize fields or field space, because they vary across the country. We have to maximize coaching ability because it's very difficult. Uh, you know, when you look at across the country and most of our youth players have been coached by parents and volunteers and great and thank God for them because without them we would not get to the numbers that we have today. But we are not done much helping them. So when you look at the regular parent volunteer donating his own time towards educating, you know, a, a young player, you're talking about someone that works from nine to five and at a six hour, you know, at six o'clock, he's on the pitch or on a pitch, trying to do their best educating a play around the four corners of development. And you probably agree with me that that's a huge task and a huge responsibility. So we thought, why not help people that way? Why not provide the best environment for them? Why not educate them along with the kids and that's what this is about today, is improving the training area. And we design a preferred training model that will allude to that. That will engage people into that direction. That will maximize every kid, you know, in their, you know, development. And I think that is what this is all about today, is, is addressing stage one, two, and three. As we all know, four to 12-year-old kids, that they've been not, we have not listened to them. And we are now going to come with a plan that has to do with the player. The player is the center of everything that we do, and it should be always. And at the same time, we're engaging also the parent, the volunteer, that it's already donated his time to maximize his expertise, to learn about the game as well, to be more efficient towards what we need. And this is what we came up, this is the design to maximize, you know, facilities, volunteers, coaching staff, club resources. It's player-centered. It's a learning, better learning focus. And definitely, you know, we call this an integrated training, which is you have a kid going across the field, you know, in a one hour, session having segments of 15 minutes being exposed to what they need to learn the game properly independent of their talent their ability they will learn 
you know, at different pace because they will dictate where they will be in a game, but they all be exposed to the key components of development. And that's, to me, the most important thing today. It's that we are designing a program and a model that will help them to be successful at their own pace. And that, to me, it's, it's exactly what we need. We design, you know, this, this model, the preferred tra training model, around, you know, four stations which will be, you know, the general movement, the soccer coordination, soccer technique, and a small-sided game. And there will be a lot of information if you want to know more about these components that we are talking about. You can learn, as you wish as well, as a parent, as a volunteer, as a savvy coach, you can learn at your own pace. If you don't have the time, you just follow the guidelines and you can do no wrong. But you have a direction now. You have a vision that I'm hoping the whole country embraces and then we can be more successful in this huge, huge task that we have ahead of us. There will be examples of sessions to every group page. We also want to encourage people to be doing their research, learn as well, come up with solutions for the problems that they, they get every day. So this is engaging. This is also a process that allows people to, in, to be interactive, to learn at their own pace. Again, very important for all of us. So like I said, every stage will have examples of sessions Every stage will have plenty of information. As you want to know more, more will be available to you. And this will be in our website. You know, we hope that we are ready to launch this end of June, that you can click and you can go and see where you sit. What can I do? Where should I go with this? This is one component of it. Now we're going to talk about our component, which is you know, the Men's Excel Pathway. And, you know, when you look and you're trying to design, you know, a, a, an Excel man pathway, uh, you know, we try to uh, make it clear, which is very difficult to make it clear to everyone in one graphic. So it needs further explanation. And that's the reason we are here trying to explain to you and any doubts that you might have, you know. But it's for us, you know, it's very important that we have today, you know, five pro clubs, you know, investing a lot of money in youth development. They give in us, on a men's side, an outlet for players to excel. And that's what we have behind today and, and, and with the presence of Tim here, uh, uh, representing the old, all the pros, saying and, and, and telling you that they are behind this program 100%. And that's very, very important for us. And if you need to know more, again, you will find that through our website where this relationship going, where we all, uh, you know, uh, uh, sit in terms of our responsibilities and, and our duties to the game. And that's, that's very important. You know, I always write this, this phrase down, which is, you know, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And for us, it fits right in. Where are we? Where we want to be? And that's very, very important. We need that. We need to ask that question to ourselves. Yeah? We need to create it. We can be as good as anybody else, but we need to pull it together. And that's the key. Trying to explain a little bit of this, this uh, Man's Excel pathway, you know, we, we, we have uh, at stage four and five, you know, we have. Uh, you know, environments that we really are keen on, you know, the high performance leagues, they cover more than one group age. It's a hub. So we would like to see players of distinction, players that have their motivation, players that have the desire to put the time in, the hours in, to be in that. Because that program will be supported by the pros, will be highly maintained and seen by CSA as a hub that will have the players that have the motivation and they want to spend the time in it. At no point is stops, it's fluid. It goes in and it goes out. 
of the desire of the player. But we would like to center, you know, that crop of players into that league that covers more than one group age. The identification camps, just briefly explain to you, you know, it's a process that we, we have engaged all the TDs across the country that represent their provinces into this process. So we basically ask their feedback, their recommendations in terms of <coughs> players of distinction. We bring those kids together into a pro environment, usually in Toronto, in Ontario, we use a TFC facility that shows you again the importance of this alignment. You know, in, in Montreal we use, you know, the impact and in BC we use the Y Cups. So we can actually see the benefit of players that they are not yet in those environments to be seen, to be motivated, to aspire to be in those environments because that's the future. And that process, we go across the country three times. We filter it. We bring him into a group that will be playing a tournament between all the five, eventually all the five pro clubs, plus a team that is created from the ones that they are not there yet. Every year this will happen for 14, 15 year old kids. That's a filtering system, identification program across the country with the input of everyone that is involved in the game. There's probably a lot more explanation that needs to be given to you, uh, but obviously, you know, this is not the time. Uh, I hope that I engaged you enough uh, and to make you believe that this vision this work that we have done, you know, will lead you to success. And I'm very proud to be here in front of you saying that today we have a vision, a vision that we want to be shared, you know, by all of us so we can move the game in the direction that we want. Thank you very much. What better indication of system alignment then hearing from one of Canada's professional clubs and what they see their role in Canada's player development vision to be. Please welcome Toronto FC General Manager, Mr. Tim Bezvachenko. On behalf of Toronto FC and the professional clubs across uh, Canada, I want to, want to thank the, uh, Canada Soccer for allowing us to participate uh, in this special announcement. Today we come together to celebrate Canada Soccer's mission to grow the sport in this country. Together we support Canada Soccer's technical vision and the continued development of Canada Soccer's players at the grassroots level, which starts with the player pathway and its principles of long-term player development. We are committed to the growth of, of the game in Canada as evidenced by our academy and youth development programs. We believe the future of Canadian soccer at the professional and international level hinges on developing young Canadians rather than relying on international players from foreign leagues. At Toronto FC, nine players have progressed from our academy to the first team, and every one of those players has represented Canada at one age level, if not multiple age levels, during their careers, and many still do. I know similar work is being done in Vancouver, Montreal, Ottawa, and Edmonton. We recognize the importance of our role as professional soccer clubs in Canada and the responsibility that comes with it. Young players across the country will look to our professional organizations to lead the way, and our continued partnership with Canada Soccer will allow us to do just that. Thanks once again. Exciting initiatives for player development are also in the works for the women's game. To tell us more, please welcome Mr. John Herdman, Canada's Women's National Team Head Coach and Women's Excel Program Director. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm waiting for this rain to come. I usually attribute that to Vancouver. So, look, it's an unprecedented time for women's football, soccer. It's, uh, we've got a World Cup just around the corner in 2015. The whole world will be here watching. And if there's a time to change our game, it's now. This country has 350,000 female participants. We get 23,000 to games, 30,000 
people coming and watching our team. There's an unprecedented support for this unique group of women. And this team should be, could be on the podium at every single event. And with the Excel pathway and the implementation of our new system, we're going to give this country that chance to be on the podium every single time. So aligning our system so that we have more Sinclairs more often by design and not chance is the key to our success. And by doing so, that's uniting our provincial system, aligning it to our national philosophy, our national style, our change in DNA, and the way our players are developed and how we approach the modern game. I'd like to thank our supporters, Bell, and on the podium, who have been huge in, in providing us the motivation and the financial capacity to create what we'll see as a change in every way our young Canadian players are developed. And for those five and six year olds that are in the audience, for those kids, there'll be a clear line to the women's national team. And you will get a chance to get there by design, not chance. Thank you. As we welcome back to the podium Earl Cochran to conclude today's presentation, once again, let's give a round of applause to today's youth club participants from North Toronto Soccer Club and Moordale Soccer Club and the Ontario Soccer Association grassroots coaches for the great station work demonstration earlier. I think they're snacking. Rebecca. Um, I want to I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, all of our speakers again. Uh, Sylvie Belleville, Tony Fonseca, John Herdman, Tim Bespachenko. Um, on behalf of the Canadian Soccer Association, thank you very much. Um, I also omitted uh, Philip Dos Santos. I saw his face as I was sitting down. So I apologize for not mentioning you in that professional group before. Thank you very much from the Ottawa Fury for being here. Um, I want to thank all of you for being a part of this special announcement. And I want to thank our, our youth athletes who were on the field earlier today, as well as the Ontario Soccer Association grassroots coaches who helped set up this station work uh, and this demonstration. It's been said a number of times up here that this, this is an important step forward for our sport. Um, it's going to set the tone for what's going to come. We continue to invest in our technical leadership to ensure that we have world-class performances by our national teams. And we need to encourage the growth of our game in Canada. As the summer months and the soccer season uh, in most of our country rolls on, you're going to find us publishing and distributing far more resources to help players in their journey along this Canada soccer pathway. Soon enough, you'll see some of these resources be focused on our coaches as their role is a critical one in our athletes' experience and, our, and their development. And we will continue to strengthen our system from grassroots to national teams to have a unified and aligned system that truly offers every participant the best possible soccer experience. Before we let you go, uh, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, media kits with all the material that we've mentioned today are available if you haven't picked those up already. Um, and be sure to make sure you grab a copy of our 2013 annual report and our 2014 media guide if you haven't done so. Um, before we move into our media availability, we're going to do a very quick photo op with all of the players. Uh, and following that, all of our speakers uh, will be available for media scrums and one-on-ones for approximately the next 30 minutes. Um, if there are any other requests over and above that, uh, please get in touch with Michelle, uh, who will be able to assist you in any way possible. Thank you again for joining us today and helping us tell the story of the Canada Soccer Pathway. We look forward to many more positive announcements like this very one in our future. Thank you again. <laughs>